If you had a head transplant, would you still be you? This may sound like a hypothetical question, but it's not. It's not even a scene out of a science fiction movie. A human head transplant is exactly what it sounds like, taking one living head and putting it onto a new body. And this is what the Italian neurosurgeon Sergio Canavero and his colleague Xiaoping Ren of China are planning to do. In fact, they've already performed a head transplant on a dead body. But just how feasible is a human head transplant, and should we schedule a cryogenic head freezing appointment anytime soon? A head transplant was considered the stuff of science fiction until 2015. This was when Dr. Canavero announced that he would perform a head transplant on a living individual. He even found a volunteer, a 30-year-old Russian man named Valery Sporidinov. Valery was suffering from a muscle-wasting disease and spent his whole life in a wheelchair. However, the Russian volunteer backed out and the surgery never went ahead. No pun intended. But Dr. Canavero didn't give up and started working in China where he received funding for his research. Last year, Canavero and Chinese scientist Ren performed the world's first human head transplant on a corpse in China, and according to them, the next stage would be to perform the transplant using living donors who are brain dead. But don't go picking out your new body just yet. There are some massive obstacles in the way. To achieve a successful head transplant, the brain would have to be kept alive during surgery by cooling it to 10 to 15 degrees Celsius, and the immune system would need to be powerfully suppressed to prevent transplant rejection. But the greatest hurdle may be restoring connections to the spinal cord. Without these connections, the brain would have no control of its new body. Researchers helped to expedite this process by using fusogens, which are chemicals that accelerate the process of refusing severed neurons. But even if they could fuse the neurons, there's no guarantee that the two halves could send useful information back and forth. Even Dr. Canavero admits that when they reattach the spinal cord, as little as 10 to 15% of the nerves are actually restored. Canavero insists that animals used in testing regained some movement, but even if that's true, the spinal cord is also the conduit for sensation, pain, and so on. There is no evidence that these sensations are restored. And we haven't even gotten started on the ethical issues, like who should get a full body transplant when that body could have helped so many people waiting for organ donations? Or the deeper questions, like how putting your head on someone else's body could affect your sense of self. Who is this hybrid person? Is it legally the head or the body? If a head transplant is successful, how long until we can actually put our heads on a robot body? These are some very interesting questions, but they're topics that we'll have to wait for another episode.